Hey guys, and uh, welcome back. Uh, this is just a little follow-up tutorial on um, the camera movement with the Xbox controller. Um, in the last uh, tutorial I did, I showed you how to move forward and backwards and strafe, uh, but you had no real control over which direction the uh, camera was going to move. So if you rotated your head to the left or right, um, you still moved in the same direction. Uh, you could strafe, but you couldn't really rotate your head and go in the direction that your head was rotating. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to kind of um, append uh, a little functionality that will allow us to do exactly that. So when we rotate our head, forward is still in the direction that we're facing, uh, rather than you know um, just in the XY coordinate system of the world. Okay, so. Uh, this is really straightforward. Um, we have to do a little bit of Lewis scripting, but it's kind of good because you'll get your little introduction to Lewis scripting, and um, it's really not super hard. So uh, it's a it's a good introduction to Lewis scripting. Okay, so um, to begin, what we're going to need is to go, you know, where, where we were we were here, and I'm just going into level flow. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this input to the left a little bit, and I'm going to go right click. And I'm going to go to my Steam VR, and I'm going to go HMD pose. Okay. Now, if you're on um, the Oculus, you're going to have the same type of an input. Just look for the HMD pose, and uh, that's where we're going to begin. So we're going to need this because this gives us our head rotation. Okay. And from this head rotation, we're going to do a little math, and we're going to, you know, basically just continue with the, everything that we did before. Uh, we're just going to use this head rotation as a new input uh, to our vector. Okay, so, uh, but to do that, we need a, a special math function which we don't have uh, available in Flow, but it is available in Lua. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our scripts folder and we're gonna go to this global, uh, this global script. Okay, so just double click on the global script and here we're gonna have to create our uh, node. Okay, so let's go ahead and just at the end of the last curly bracket, but before this hard bracket, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new curly bracket, okay? So just make the open curly bracket and hit return, and that'll automatically make the open and the close for us, okay? So that's nice. Um, now, all we have to do is just name our function, or name our node, really. So we're gonna go name equals, and we're gonna go, quote, rotate vector, okay? So that's all we need there. And then we're going to go args. Now what args is, is the arguments that we're going to be handing this function. Okay, so this is basically the inputs. You can think of args as inputs to the function. Okay, and we're going to go args equal open curly bracket. And once again, if we hit return, it's going to automatically close that curly bracket for us. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to type vector underscore in. And it's really important we spell all this stuff right because we're going to need to pull this later on in the in the actual function. Okay, so we've got vector underscore in, and we're going to go equals quote vector three quote. Okay, so what this is basically saying is we're going to be supplying it vector in. That's its name. Okay, so the name of what we're sending it is vector in. We could name this anything we want, just so long as it's you know consistent on both sides of the equation when we go to the function. Okay, so um, the vector in is its name, and vector three is the data type. Okay, so we want, need to make sure that this is spelled exactly correct. Vector three. Okay, so that's got to be absolute. Okay, now the next thing is we're going to want to pass it the rotation. Okay, so rotation, and we're going to go equals, and we're going to go quote quaternion. Okay, and again, name, data type. Okay, and that's really all we're going to need for our arguments. Okay, so we can close that and just make sure that that's nice and clean. And now what we need to do is return a vector. Okay, so return, oops, yeah, returns equal open bracket or open curly bracket and hit return again. So what this is going to say is what are we returning from this function? Okay, so we're, we're giving it a vector in and we're giving it a rotation and we're returning another vector. So what we're going to go vector out. Okay, let's make sure all that spelling is correct. Good. Equals and this is going to be vector three again. Vector three. And we need to put this inside of quotes. Okay, so Again, let's just run through this really quick. So we're passing it the arguments 
of a vector in and a rotation, and the vector in is going to be of the data type vector 3, and the rotation is going to be the uh, data type of quaternion, which is a, basically a vector 4. Okay, so, um, so that's what we're doing here, and on the returns, what we're going to be giving back from the function, or back from the node, is going to be a vector out, okay? And the, um, the data type is going to be also a vector 3, okay? So that's all we need there. Now we can do a couple other declarings. So we're going to go query equals false. So this will just basically say we do not want to make this as a query node. We want to actually, you know, have this happen when we ask for it. Um, and we can do function equals, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the old existing project flow callbacks. So we're just going to grab this project flow callbacks content here and go control C, and we're going to go, you know, quote and paste. So we have project flow callbacks and dot, and here's our actual function, which is going to be rotate underscore vector. Okay, so <clears throat> what this is basically doing is saying, look in the project flow callbacks file um, and, you know, grab the, or instantiate the rotate vector function, okay? So that's basically what we're doing here. And this is spelled wrong, so I gotta make sure that that's spelled right. So it's function equals project flow callbacks dot rotate vector. Okay, good. So that's what we need there. And then the category, is going to be equal to quote and we want to put this in um you know let's just put this back in the project so project forward slash math okay and what this is going to do this category is going to be saying where it's going to be found here so if i look under project um we're going to have a, a new uh output called math and it's going to have the necessary um function within that folder okay so let's go ahead and hit save and we've got you know, everything we need to do here for the call, okay? So this is basically describing our node, okay? But what we haven't done is actually said what the node does yet, okay? We've called the function, but we haven't created that function. So we need to create that function now. So let's go into the Lua folder and let's grab the flow callbacks file. And down at the bottom, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function, okay? So we're gonna go function, and we're gonna call uh, the same name again. So we're gonna go up to the top here and grab this project flow callbacks, copy it and paste it. So that just says that we're, we're namespacing it under the project flow callbacks and we're gonna go dot and we're gonna go rotate vector. Okay, and we're gonna go open brackets T or I'm sorry, open parenthesis T and close parenthesis, okay? So that's the call of the function, and then we wanna end the function, okay? So let's just understand what happened here. So in our global scripts, we're calling this function, okay? And here, we're declaring that function, okay? And we're passing it the argument of T, okay, or the table, we're passing it the table T, and that is just natural. You always want to use T here because this is going to pass T to the, uh, to the function automatically. We don't, that's just part of the way that the flow node structure works is that it's always going to pass a table with whatever inputs we have. So T dot vector in is going to be one of the arguments of this, um, of this uh, function. And T dot rotation is going to be another argument of the function. Okay, that's just natural by the name right here. Okay, so under flow callbacks, we're saying project flow callbacks dot rotate vector and the t we're passing it the table. Okay, and the table, like I said, is carrying with it uh, vector in and rotation. And I'll show you how we call those in a moment. Okay, so now we're gonna go t dot vector underscore out. And that's gonna be what we're passing out or the return of this function, okay? And again, it's gonna be held in this T parameter for the table, okay? So that's all we need there. So T dot vector out, and we're gonna go equal, and this is just a function within um, Stingray, so we just are gonna uh, get the Stingray function, which is gonna be Stingray dot quaternion uh, quaternion dot rotate 
and we're going to go open parenthesis t dot rotation comma t dot vector in okay so um again t is our table okay we're passing it the table of t okay and then we're calling in this function t dot rotation and t dot vector so t is the table and rotation is the key so t dot rotation is there and t dot vector in is here okay so we've got the rotation we've got the vector in so these are the things we're passing to the function and here is where we're calling those pieces for the function okay so that's how we do it it's going to be t dot whatever you put into here okay so you could actually make this you know t dot whatever and make it a string and then call it from here by saying t dot whatever okay but you don't want to do that this is this has to be done exactly as is i'm just kind of giving you some theory okay so um so t dot rotation t dot vector in those are our uh, variables that we're passing it and now uh, all we have to do is return t return and t okay and again oops i don't want a table i just want t okay good um so now we have our completed function so that's all we really needed to do here okay so we've got t dot vector out and t dot vector out is going to be equal to whatever the result of this equation is okay and then we're going to return t again so t is our table and now it includes this t dot vector out and guess what in our project flow uh in our in our flow node we're saying the vector underscore out is going to be the return so it's going to be looking for this t dot vector out and we've already called it right here t dot vector out so again you can imagine the t dot is here we don't have to do that we don't want to do that actually but that's effectively what it's saying is t dot vector out equals the vector three okay so that's all we need to do okay so um that's basically it let's go save and let's save this one let's hit f5 and that's going to refresh all of our content we can close this window now and now before this input okay we're just going to add our new nodes so we're going to go right click and we're going to go project and we're going to go math and we're going to go rotate vector okay so that's going to give us this new node and look at that we have vector in rotation and vector out just like we described in that flow um that flow call right so everything is there just like we told it to be okay so we're going to delete that axis value we're going to connect the axis value to the vector in and we're going to take the head rotation and connect that to rotation. Then we're going to take the vector out and connect that to the new vector. Okay. So what this is basically going to be doing is a math function that's going to combine our current axis with the head rotation. All right. So this is a really useful little, you know, thing to do here because this is like almost every first person shooter. This is how you're going to do it. Okay. So um, anytime you want first person, whether it's in, um, you know, a standard video game or if we're you know in vr it doesn't really matter this is still the same kind of rotation function we're going to need to do that okay so um let's go ahead and connect the out to the in and the last thing we're going to do is just kind of clean this up a little bit before we were using level update that's not really the most efficient because it's basically updating every frame what we want to do is only update when we push on the stick okay so otherwise it's just wasted um you know uh clock cycles okay so we're just going to move this guy down a little bit and we're going to take the out from here and connect it all the way across to this uh, in. Okay, so now we have a nice, clean, and optimized function uh, that will take head rotation into account when we uh, move around. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save. So file, save level, and let's give it a test play. All right, so play, and we should find that when we look around, we're going to see that if I move my forward stick, we should move forward. And if I rotate my head, we still continue to move forward no matter what, okay? So there we have it. Um, that should do everything you need. And you can still strafe. Everything works with that. In fact, it works just like it should. Um, and we're pretty much set to go. All right? So um, that's basically it. I did want to show you one last thing uh, just to make your function a little bit cooler. Uh, let's go ahead and... Do something fun up here so up here we have this level loaded and we're pushing it into this move speed um, in the earlier tutorial I was explaining that you can adjust this on the fly so let's go ahead and do that um, let's delete the level loaded let's go right click and let's go into input Xbox uh, 
thumb, uh, Xbox button this time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically say on the X button, sure, I don't know why, just grab the X button. We're gonna go right click and we're gonna go flow control and toggle, okay? So now we've got a nice toggle function when pressed. We're gonna go even up to this move speed and we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna put this down here and we're gonna go odd into that one and we'll make it you know, into 0.02, okay? So um, now we should be able to, actually we could even make that a little faster. Let's make it 0.03. I don't wanna make it too fast because we'll run right off the board. Um, but yeah, so now what we've got is basically you know, a walk speed and a run speed. It's always gonna be move speed, but we're, you know, you can kind of think of it as walk speed and run speed. Um, and yeah, so now we've got that done and we can hit save, file save level, and we can go level viewport, play. And now, if I'm walking forward, uh, what happened here? I've got two different move speeds. I did realize I made one slight error in this uh, because I'm never instantiating that move speed. So you have to hit X in order to even instantiate it. So we're gonna do one last thing to fix this um, and we're pretty much good to go, okay? So there we have it, move speed, run speed, all from that variable. Um, I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna go into level flow and make the last correction. And that is gonna to be to go on event, level loaded, and I'm just gonna put this to walk speed, okay? And now we've got everything we need. So what's gonna happen is when it loads, it's actually gonna set this variable. Before we weren't setting it, so it was nil, which is zero. So when it was plugged into here, it was basically doing nothing, okay? So let's go save level, and let's give it one more test play, and we should be uh, pretty much ready to rock here, okay? So move, I've got my, everything works now. I don't have to hit X to start. And when I hit X, I go into run. And when I hit X again, I go into um, walk mode, okay? So I've got walk and run uh, all built right into the X button, okay? So that should do you. Um, hopefully you found this uh, tutorial useful and interesting. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.